Good afternoon everybody and welcome to another very hot afternoon tea with the captain. Joining me again is Illicit Soul, also known as Sergeant Prof, a longtime player and mod of Battlefield 2142. Hello there, it's been a long time. How are you doing? Oh yeah, it's been a while. Long time no talk. Yeah, I checked, it's already two years. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, time flies like crazy, that's absolutely insane. I hope you're doing well, too. Yeah, just suffering during the summer, but for that reason I don't have a hot tea with me. I have uh, apple tea, which I cooled down with some ice cubes. Yeah, some cold tea that really gets the job done. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I would say let's go right into it. What's basically new in your gaming life? Well, uh, these days are quite busy for me, you know, the job, business and gaming remains like as this little uh, hobby, this little uh, fun activity. So yeah, adult life is really busy, but there are some new things. Currently I'm enjoying new Warframe update. And yes, Warframe is one of my favorite games ever. And in one frame right now, we got new flying Warframe called Jade, which is crazy fun. And it feels like out in a gunship, which mows down uh, hordes of enemies by hundreds of thousands. Yeah, it's super fun. You mean Warframe or yes, War Thunder? Yes, it's kind of ca controllable character inside Warframe. We can have many of them. And currently there are like around 60 of them. Never heard about that game. Yeah, it's super fun. I, I would recommend it. Oh, okay. It has single player stories and uh, also player versus AI communities very friendly. Yeah, give it a shot. It's free. Uh, it's perfect. I love everything co-op basically and having another co-op game can never hurt. So I will definitely check it out. Yeah. And besides that, do you also work on your Battlefield mods? Yeah, yeah, still do. Project Remaster is currently my the only active modding project right now. And nothing else related to gaming right now. And do you know how the status currently is in the Battlefield 2 and Battlefield 2142 community? Is it still active? Well, I'm quite out of sync with Battlefield 2 right now. I had to put it aside due to the lack of time. But as I glanced uh, at the servers recently, it's there are still uh, some online servers and people are really playing, especially Karkand maps. Karkand was extremely popular back in the days when Battlefield 2 was released and it's so popular. People must be just crazy about this map and yeah. Karkand never dies. Yes, I can still remember this crazy breakfast and this are still going wrong. Yeah, it's insane. To be honest, I was never a big fan of the map. I, I enjoyed it from time to time, but playing only on this map, uh, no, <laughs> it never was something for me. Uh, well, uh, some people are crazy about it. I think Arkand has very interesting map layout and, uh, and this it is perfectly placed and it gives it some very fun tactical place, uh, especially if you know the map and you know like secret roads and you manage to break through uh, the enemy side. You can like sneak around the enemies and shoot them in the back. Yeah, it's fun. And it also uh, depends on luck a lot. So yeah. And it was even ported to 2142. It has a big fan base. Yeah, but still, currently the situation with Battlefield 2142 is not as good compared to Battlefield 2 because there are there are way fewer online servers right now. And I believe there is only like a dozen or more players on the weekends only, especially on reclamation servers, which is probably the most active community right now from my point of view, but I still hope that, that 2142 stays alive for the years to come. And uh, in overall, 
the current player base situation seems tough. And it might be just all the people people playing this old game due to nostalgia, yeah, you know? It, it's so sad because it's the only Battlefield game which has a Titan mode, and I love this mode so much. Yes, Titan mode is crazy fun and very unique, and I really wish uh, more players could discover this game, but because the official servers are down, it's quite complicated to set it up to play it online, and it's not user-friendly that much, which is really killing the current uh, player base. That and the fact that you can't buy it. So sad. Yeah, yeah. But don't talk about sad stuff. Let's talk about the future of Project Remastered. What can you tell me there? What did you work the last two years basically on this mod? Well, there are some really exciting things. Some are really great. A few are not so good. But let's start from the worst ones right now, because it might be possible that next full release might be the last, apart from some small fixes and patches if necessary, because we will try to, to fix some sort of critical issues if they happen, but I have plans to retire from 2142 modding, uh, because it took me like a lot of time and I want to focus on other things in life. But I would absolutely stay as a player and I would totally enjoy this. Maybe we'll host some servers and online events as well. That's totally possible. Our team also has some ideas about zombie mode, like uh, additional mini mod, similar to Battlefield 2 Omnisid mode, but for 2142. I believe it would be very fun, especially with other players. Or offline. Uh, we may also update interface a little bit uh, because it's, it's it's still not perfect but we will see. Personally I have created three custom maps for 2142 that are kind of almost ready. One of them is backstab and it is practically done but it still needs to work with flag layout for single player mode but uh, it's practically game ready and I'm really genuinely happy how this map turned out because in a way uh, backstab is a spiritual remake of backstab level from battlefield modern combat released in 2005 and it was for consoles for playstation 2 and xbox so yeah and i remember backstab was like fan favorite map and I wanted to deliver it to 2142 like the twist of my own. And here you go, a few years in the making, this map is almost done. And uh, I might also finish two more additional maps, yeah. And returning to Project Remaster, currently we have like a list of things to complete for next release. Uh, and some of these things are really exciting because we have a number of totally new unshot cast weapons, updated animations, especially for those weapons uh, that had like these animations that were not well received from our fans and testers. So we really updated them. For example, Rilo Rifle got like animation overhaul, especially the reload and some other things. Uh, we also updated some sounds, expanded its customization, because on base game we could switch only between like three primary weapons, which was kind of limiting, and in the remaster we can switch between five right now. That's really nice that you expand on that. Yeah, we also added new types of weapons, like semi-automatic sniper rifles that have like faster rate of fire, but you also have to deal with recoil and uh, uh, reduced scope zoom. There are also automatic magnetic uh, launchers for engineers that function as anti-vehicle weapons. And these uh, magnetic seeker mines, they follow the vehicles until, until they 
catch up and explode, which is very fun. And the same launchers can be also used as anti infantry weapons. For example, you can fire grenades at special angles and they bounce back and act like grenades, but they take some seconds to detonate. So uh, as a player, you will notice them and you will have time to run away, to escape. But this also brings new dynamics because uh, you have to change your position. And these kind of grenades can be used like uh, a trap, a diversion. Uh, besides that, we also updated uh, grenade animations. We got new animations set inspired by Battlefield Bad Company 1. And uh, now grenade spam will be extra enjoyable. Sounds all amazing. Can't wait to play it. I hope you host a few community events when you release it. Oh yeah, that is uh, that is our plan. Oh, amazing! I love it. And what I also love, I read that you finally have some working bots in the Titan mode. I saw already the limitation that you can't really have the bots on the Titan itself, but on the ground at least. It's a really nice achievement and long overdue. Well, yeah, that's a big highlight of our next update. Uh, so yeah, we've figured out how to implement bots like for the basic mode. So bots will capture silos, silos function like flags in here. So bots don't have a huge difficulty capturing them. So this mode functions like, functions like on, on its basic level. But yeah, we cannot make bots enter the Pythons and hold them to go on like on crazy missions to blow them from the inside, like plant explosives, uh, run away, detonate them. Yeah, that's like that's like uh, it's way too complicated. You think it will be ever possible that the team is cracking the code basically to make that possible? I really doubt that. That would be like a enormous investment of effort and time but we have some ideas about the planting like control controller uh, vehicles like stationary sentries inside the titans or maybe some stationary weapons like trucks that pop up from the floors or ceilings and they could function as guards making uh, it more complicated for players to detonate the tight. Yeah, that's that's just a theoretical idea, but we will see. Well, at least a workaround. Of course, it would be amazing if you had an uh, army of zombies on a titan chasing you off the titan and you jump off the titan and all the bots also jump behind you. That would be amazing, look. Yeah, sounds absolutely crazy. Too bad jumping is something very difficult to make. But in theory, you could make a station or item like a static object and maybe uh, use it for like close quarter combat type map. I don't know, we will see. You also mentioned that you maybe soonish leave the Battlefield 2142 com modding community. Do you then work on other projects? What is the, the future in gaming for you? Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it might come to you as a surprise, but I'm working on a novel trilogy. My novel is like a mix of dystopia, cyberpunk, a bit of mystery. And uh, my current story I'm writing is about the Earth and the Earth. It is struck by this interstellar comet which completely, completely reshapes its surface and covers it like with this thick layer of comet material, this uh, dust and sand, turning most of previous habitable land into a huge ash desert. So it's pretty much like Dune comes to Earth, if you have seen the movies. Yeah, interesting. You have to send me a link as soon as it's published. Yeah, and... Uh... To extend on the book just a little bit, uh, this new Ashland comes with its own unique ecosystems, adapted uh, animals with evolved or in a way devolved to adapt to this new environment. 
human societies fragmented into different factions, tribes, even new empires. But uh, despite all this seemingly doom and gloom, it also brought this unique superconductor metal, which is used by surviving civilizations or factions for new crazy technology development. And it's kind of a new gold rush in the story. And this metal is very scarce and uh, all many factions embark on deadly expeditions deep into this ashland to find this material, risking it all. And among some characters there are the saying, Ashland always take more than it gives. And basically this story is uh, besides Dune, also inspired by, by Arcane, uh, I mean the League of Legends TV show as well, because I'm really focusing on character development, chemistry between characters, and world building. Speaking about uh, this novel, I have no deadline for the release, but I wouldn't be surprised if it takes like from three to six years to finish at least the first book, because I have a full-time day job and also side business. So it really eats up my time, and that's sad. Uh, I can imagine I could do so much more if I was, like, unemployed, but again, it's not a not, not very good way of living right now, especially with this economy. But again, the are the same. Slow and steady wins the race, and avoids the complete burnout. I might add. And also besides the novel, I have this uh, a little bit vague idea joining Beyond Skyrim Cyrodiil mod project as a quest writer. Because it could be a great opportunity to test my writing skills, uh, gain like new experience in this similar field of modding. Also it could uh, add something other to my portfolio, to my experience. So yeah, and it would be really great to have a little piece of my work incorporated in this huge scale project. But right now I, I don't want to overwork myself too much. And I want to complete project remaster first and then focus on other things like novel writing and maybe Skyrim project. So we will see how this turns out. So you have a long road ahead of you and it sounds really ambitious and interesting. I hope we will see maybe in the future also a mod project or a game project from your novel. Yes, actually I have considered game project because it could bolster uh, the community and the sales because uh, game is a very popular form of storytelling and uh, having a book set in the same universe uh, both book and game can function very well and supplement each other, especially in the area of marketing, you know. Yeah, can never hurt to have a side project, but you already have so much plans. I guess it will be hard for you. I wish you the best. I really hope you achieve all your goals. Following your passion can never hurt. Absolutely. It's something that makes one life worth living, I believe. And it's like this perfect antidote against boring life, as I like to say. Yeah, and I also think it's very necessary even to have big goals in life. If you don't have anything to achieve, it can get boring and maybe a little bit depressing if it doesn't work. Absolutely, absolutely. Having things to look forward to this. Uh, it's such a powerful tool of motivation, even if you are having like a bad day in general at work or anything else, you have other areas, you know, to lean on, to support yourself, either, uh, you know, uh, morally, let's say, it really helps and it makes you much stronger in general. Yeah, exactly. That was also what I thought, if you don't have any, any ambition, Beside your normal day job and your daily routines and you have a bad day, something like that can really keep you afloat, afloat and motivated to, to life, basically. Yeah, absolutely true. And besides those many projects, 
do you still maybe have some time to watch or play newer games, newer movies? Yeah, well, lately my time will be very scarce, but uh, I hopped in for a few games or Warframe, also on Deep Rock Galactic Survivor. It's a very fun, like, space mining game. I also suggested because the uh, uh, games are quite short and you're dropped into this very dynamical, uh, I think, uniquely generated level. You have to mine resources and try to fight against uh, deadly bugs that are swarming to kill you. So it's it's fun, it's dynamical and uh, relatively unique, I would say. And recently I finished Uncharted 4. Quite enjoyed the story. Uh, in general, I have like this soft spot for RPGs and uh, games of deep uh, storytelling, like Baldur's Gate 3, The Witcher, Red Dead Redemption 2, because they are great mediums of storytelling, you know. And sometimes it's really fun to think how much you can learn in terms of uh, from storytelling, from video games. It's uh, like uh, reading a novel, but following the story very visually and uh, interactively. And now I kind of want to replay Witcher 3 Wild Hunt again. So I guess I, could, I should just simply take a day of work for this game adventure and at some point, you know. Many of the games you <laughs> mentioned I have on my pile of shame. I have them on Steam but never played them as I want to. Definitely sure these games are amazing. The stories are really rich and dramatic and all the risque, the witch, others, they are one of my very favorites. I, I definitely plan to do that in the future. The, the last six months were a little bit rough. I hoped it it only would have been the, the after Christmas time, but family issue still are very strong in, in my family, basically. So I had to, to help them a lot. But there is a silver lighting around the horizon. So I hope I can at least also finally finish a website. After <laughs> over 20 years, I started to do again a website by using WordPress and uh, uh, website builder code Divi. It's interesting to go back into websites, but it's also frustrating at some times. <laughs> it's, I guess, like normal programming. Oh, I can absolutely imagine. And yeah, basically, I know most people today say, why do you need a website? But I think we already lost so many good websites. So much information is already lost. I want to preserve some of it at least on a website, like my streams, like the information I collect for all my videos. It, it should be archived somewhere. And yeah, a website is the best thing. Discord is very bad for that. Absolutely. I believe you will succeed uh, with your website project. And I believe this archive of information is a really noble goal and it will come in handy for you in, in the future. I hope so, I hope so. But as you know, with programming, one day you're really motivated and then you hit a brick for every five seconds and you're so frustrated that you want to throw everything away. <laughs> but hopefully I'm over the, the worst part of it. So I'm, hopefully I can release it in the next few weeks. Let's hope so. Besides, there are many new innovations with AI and Hopefully it can help you, you know, for example, yeah. I also have a look out on every AI. I use so many different AIs for video creation already. It's really amazing what you can do and how fast it is. It's a little bit scary, to be honest, also. Yes, future is, is really scary and uncertain. But I would say I have seen uh, people losing their jobs and being replaced by AI, especially in customer service sector. Is it already that far? Do people lose their jobs? Oh, oh. Yes, people are being replaced, uh, I would say, by uh, large amounts. 
uh, I know some people dislike uh, mediocre and worst performance are completely fired or moved to other projects. And uh, the remaining uh, top performers are using AI to just uh, achieve inhuman speed and uh, respond to, let's say, chats extra quickly. And they deal uh, with this a huge amounts of work like really well thanks to ai yeah really a little bit scary but also of course fascinating what it can do yeah but i can see that these uh, lower performers and other people are really getting in trouble right now because you, you know they have to figure out how, how to make a living in a new way and sometimes it's it's very tough yeah definitely and it gets tougher all the time, I feel. Yeah, wait till we have like these uh, humanoid robots and they will start replacing manual labor. That would be pretty rough. Then we're just two steps away from Skynet. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but at least I can say I, I will help Skynet. So I'm on his good side when he is coming. I. I plan to um, also stream more in the future, so he has more inputs to collect from me. So I'm just a friendly neighborhood streamer. <laughs> um. I found a very simple way basically to uh, multi-stream also. At the moment I only stream for YouTube because the, the quality you can put out there is much better and the bitrate is much higher you can give it. But there is a simple tool which allows me to stream in high quality to YouTube and in lower quality to Twitch without any performance loss. So I hope Skynet will be happy with me. <laughs> maybe, maybe you will get spared. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and for the human population, I of course also have plans. I, I plan some gaming events. Um, there is a big Stargate anniversary around the corner I managed to convince a few fellow streamers and modders of the franchise to join a big party basically in, in the last weekend of July where we play all crazy Stargate mods. Stargate is one of those franchises which is cursed sadly. Every real game which is released is also cancelled a few months later or um, it doesn't even release. We have a few games in the Stargate franchise which had four or five years of development and then got cancelled just before the release. So mods is the only content. Now that sounds crazy, yes. But yeah, for all the details, of course, please look in the description. I put everything down there. And as you know, I'm a big fan of mods and maps. So I will also start a new contest series in August or September in which basically everybody can submit mods or maps, which I will then play during a live stream. And the best three will receive even a prize. So I hope I will receive some really good stuff there, which I have never seen. That sounds really cool. Yeah, I highly encourage this as a map. It's, it's a great challenge. And a good way for the map is to learn new things as well, find inspiration. And I also want to basically, like I mentioned before, archive all this amazing stuff you guys do. There is so much stuff which is created now and there is so much stuff which was created. And I think everything deserves a spotlight. So I hope there is a, a, lo a large audience there who is enjoying that content. And yeah, basically that are my plans for the summer. Do you have any plans for the summer? Oh, uh, plans for the summer. Let me think. My schedule is really busy and there's so little space, but I do have some plans on reading, finding more inspiration for writing and honing my writing skills a little bit further. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll find some time to replay The Witcher uh, for the sake of nostalgia as well. But we will see. Do you have any holiday plans or do you uh, save that for winter? Uh, I'm saving it, yeah, for later. Not a huge fan of uh, summer heat, yeah, but we will see. Yeah, I'm definitely on board with you there. I also don't enjoy the summer heat. It could 
go away. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. I'm quite a cave dweller, so I'm, I'm just getting away from the sun, hiding all the time, deep in my secret chamber, modding games. Yeah, that's quite my lifestyle. Back when uh, Corona hit, it was a little bit of a relief. Basically, uh, I, I didn't have to worry that I'm just a, a cave dweller, a, a hermit in my own cave. It's, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that bad for me. Yeah, everybody tasted this, this lifestyle, yeah. Okay, then let's have some look what we have for the target event on the unpacking side. It was a. I guess you don't know, there was a, a, a company called Eagle Moss, they went bankrupt and they had to sell all their stuff to get it very cheap, some nice models of many starships I'm from Stargate. Yo, that's a nice one. I love the detail. It's really nicely done. Oh, also the stuff down here. Very fine print. Nice. Also, this is plastic, but this is all metal. Up really? Here. Yeah, this is totally metal. Uh, that's really impressive. Really love this model. It would make a wonderful collection piece. Have a look how it's on the stand. <laughs> so, always hard to figure out where it's going. Okay, take Up, your uh... time. <laughs> no, that's not. I think it's down here at the end. Oh, maybe here. Yeah, here it is. Maybe. Enter point has to be, yeah, perfect. Oh, nice. Good. Uh, of Great. course, you need a counterpoint, the villains. Fox is fighting with me. Uh, absolutely. Also a very nice model. Also, great level of detail. Let's have the stand already at the side. And let's have a look here. Okay, the center is again kind of metal, a little bit heavy, and the rest is plastic. Mm. Oh, all the details here. Don't yeah, know if you can see all the, the little windows. That looks insane. Also here. And it should, I guess, fit. Yeah. Perfect. Nice additions to my collection. Absolutely. Yeah, done. I have shared all my knowledge, all my news. Anything you want to share before we close it off? Uh, what else I could add? Well, I believe I have covered everything I really wanted. Yeah, especially. Battlefield 2142 situation. Uh, I'm still having some hope for proper remake from electronic ads or dice. Hopefully 2143 will come out someday, but uh, I'm keeping my expectations low just in case. Yeah. Did you play any of the latest Battlefield games? Uh, my latest Battlefield game was uh, Battlefield 1, and I really loved it. I believe it is, it is crazy fun, and I love 
maps, weapons, and animations. But I was quite unhappy with the battlefield went what to do in the latest one, and uh, I think it did poorly the uh, overall character customization, level design. The game turned out kind of bland and very generic, and it lacks of this bad spirit like of Bad Company 2. Battlefield 2, 2142, and some other older ones. Yeah, I guess it hurt the the game itself very much that you removed the class system. Absolutely, yes. Uh, it's another game in my pile of shame. In the future, I guess I will try it, but the motivation isn't that great. Yeah, I suggest trying it like in far future, like very, very, very far future. <laughs> but before I will play that, I definitely want to play your mod before. And yeah, I wish you all the luck to release it soonish. And then I want to read your novels, of course. So I hope we stay in touch. Thank you so much. Then have a good day. Bye bye. Bye bye.